In this video, we are going to talk about the spectrochemical series. The spectrochemical series is a list of ligands arranged in order of their ability to split the orbital energies. In order to understand what this means, we are going to take a look first at the crystal field theory. So what is the crystal field theory? It's simply a theory that describes the bonding taking place in transition metal complexes. Now, a metal complex is made up of a metal ion, which has a positive charge, and a ligand, which has a negative charge. Due to these opposing forces, there is an electrostatic force of attraction between the metal ion and the ligand, and this provides stability. So what will happen is the ligand will donate its lone pair of electrons, and it will form a dative bond with the metal ion. Now we will look at what exactly happens as the ligand approaches the metal ion. Apart from this positive-negative attraction between the metal ion and the ligand, there is also a negative-negative repulsion taking place, and this comes from the lone pair of electrons in the ligand and the electrons which are already present in the metal's d orbitals. This repulsion will cause d orbital splitting. There are two ways in which the ligand can approach the metal ion. The ligands can approach the metal ion in a symmetrical field or an octahedral field. In a symmetrical field, the repulsion will raise the energy of the d orbitals all to the same extent. However, in an octahedral field, two of the orbitals, the dz squared and the dx squared minus y squared orbitals, which are known as the axial orbitals, will be raised to a greater energy than the other three orbitals, the dxy, the dyz, and the dxz, and these are known as the interaxial orbitals. This is essentially what it means when we refer to the splitting of the d orbitals. The energy difference between the two sets of orbitals is referred to as de delta octahedral. Another important point to mention is that the actual orbitals having higher energy will form the eg orbitals, and the interaxial orbitals having the lower energy will form the t2g orbitals. Overall, the splitting of the d orbitals depends on three things. Number one, the size of the metal, number two, the oxidation state of the metal, and number three, the ligand. Let's take a closer look at these three factors. Number one, the size of the metal. If we have a large metal, there will be large splitting. And if we have a small metal, there will be small splitting. By large splitting, we mean that delta octahedral, the difference between the two sets of orbitals, will be large. And by small splitting, we mean that the delta octahedral will be quite small. The second factor is the oxidation state of the metal. If the metal has a high oxidation state, there will be large splitting. And if the metal has a low oxidation state, there will be small splitting. The third one is the ligand. So a strong field ligand will cause large splitting, and a weak field ligand will cause small splitting. This is where the spectrochemical series comes in. We must remember that the spectrochemical series has been compiled by chemists and we cannot predict the strength of a ligand. These strengths have all been tested experimentally. So, the spectrochemical series is a list of ligands. They are arranged in order of their ability to split d orbitals in an octahedral complex. The spectrochemical series can also be referred to as a list of metals. However, it is mainly referred to as the list of ligands. If we take a look at the list, we see they are arranged in order of increasing ligand strength. At the far left of the list, we find the iodide ions. These are the weakest field ligands. They cause the smallest splitting and therefore give rise to high spin states. And at the far right of the list, we find the cyanide ion, which is the strongest field ligand. It causes the largest splitting and therefore it gives rise to low spin states. 
Let's take a look at high spin and low spin states more closely. In the high spin state, the electrons will first fill up all the orbitals singly. Only after this is when they will pair up. Whereas in the low spin state, the electrons tend to fall in the lowest possible energy state. They will then pair up and completely fill up the low energy orbital first. They will only begin to fill up the higher energy orbital when there is no more space in the low energy orbital. Now we are going to look at the absorption of light by metal complexes. When metal ions are exposed to light which is equal in energy to delta octahedral, and just to remind you again, delta octahedral is the energy difference between the two sets of the orbitals. So when the metal ions are exposed to light which is equal to this energy difference between the two orbitals, the electrons in the lower energy d orbitals will absorb this light and they will become excited to the higher energy orbitals. As they do this, the metal complex takes on a characteristic color. We use the color wheel to predict what colors are expressed when certain metal complexes absorb light. So for example, here we have two species of cobalt 2. In the first species, a chloride ion is used as a ligand. Yellow light is absorbed and a deep blue color is seen. In the second species, water is used as a ligand. Green light will be absorbed and a purple color will be seen. In conclusion, the color a metal complex produces when it absorbs light depends on the delta octahedral, the energy difference between the orbitals. This essentially depends on the extent of d orbital splitting, and the extent of d orbital splitting depends on 1. the size of the metal, 2. the oxidation state of the metal, and 3. the ligand. This is the end of the video. Thank you for watching and we hope you found it useful.